All right, guys, it's a gloomy Monday. And we're heading out to the hole, which is right back there. Now, exactly where this is, East New York, Queens, I'll tell you that it's kind of dead smack in the middle between East New York, Howard Beach, a neighborhood called Lindenwood is, I believe, what it's referred to as. We can argue about where this is all day. You guys can tell me, but it's Brooklyn, Queens border. And the hole is right back there. I got my buddy Chris here with me today. You. And we're, uh, he's coming with me to make sure uh, nothing happens over there. He's my muscle. <laughs> you know, we might run into some characters. But before we get over to the hole, which is right there, we're going to look at this place right here. This is the Lindenwood Diner. Now, one of the stories about this place is that this was a frequent Gotti crew hangout. And one story that I can tell you about this place is that in March of 1980, John Favara, he hits Frank Gotti and he kills him. He is uh, John Gotti's neighbor. We all know the story of the death of John Gotti's son. Now by July of 1980, John Favara disappears. He's kidnapped by what we're told is John Corneglia, Tony Roach Rampino, Gene Gotti, and I believe Willie Boy Johnson was also present for that. Now what happens after that is that they give the body to Charles Carneglia and they take him over to the Fountain Avenue junkyard. Now I did a video on the Carneglia brothers where I visited the junkyard. You can check that out. So it came out years later in court that that body was handed over to Charles Carneglia and he did one of his methods which was to dispose of the bodies in barrels of acid. And that is apparently what happened to John Favara. Now, while this was happening, this was taking a while and the crew was kind of like, what the fuck is going on? You taking too long to do this. So they're over here at the Lindenwood Diner and they're eating one night. And uh, Angelo Quack Quack Ruggiero and a couple other guys are here, probably Carneglia, some of the other guys. And uh, Charles Carneglia walks in and he has uh, John Favara's finger bone in his, uh, in his pocket, I assume, in his possession, and he tosses it in Angelo Ruggiero's soup bowl. And you might have heard that story before. I spoke about it in my Carneglia Brothers video, and it's in mob lore. You can look that up. Well, that incident happened right here at the Lindenwood Diner. So you could imagine the guys hanging out here, Carneglia rolling up, and what I just talked about happened. And this would have been a popular hangout for that crew. And it is right near the hole, which is over this fence line here, where they originally thought that John Favara might have been. They never found him. So I'm going to go with the story that he was, in fact, dissolved. And a part of his body was once inside this diner. As morbid as that may sound. All right, now me and Chris, we're going to head over to the hole. We're going to make our way over there. And we're going to try to pinpoint the... Uh, the exact lot where the three capos were buried by the Gotti crew after they were killed at the 2020 Club in Brooklyn, a place that was owned by Sammy the Bull Gravano. And I'm told that it's on Blake and Dumont, the lot. So we're going to find that exact lot, and we're going to try to pinpoint that and show you guys that today. Um, so let me, let me uh, pause for now, and let's figure it out. Okay guys, we're back. And we're heading into the hole right now. And we're heading to Blake and Ruby, which is right here. Why are we heading to Blake and Ruby? Well, Blake and Ruby was said to be the spot where the three capos. Whoa, that's a loud. That's a loud bus. Get that exhaust checked. So Blake and Ruby was where the three capos were buried. Now we know the story of the three capos in May of 81 when they're killed at the 2020 club by the Bonanno crime family because they were rebelling against Rustelli, who was the imprisoned boss at the time. 
and you had Messino, Vitali, and you had some of the Canadian guys like uh, Jolan Doshiasa. And they met them there and they concocted this plan to take these guys out. And that's exactly what happened at Sammy the Bulgravano's 2020 club in Brooklyn. Now, we all know the story. It's an infamous mob hit, the Three Capos murder. But after that, we also know that the bodies were put in the possession of Gotti's guys. Guys like John Corniglia, uh, Willie Boy Johnson. I believe Gene Gotti was in on it, possibly Willie Boy Johnson as well. And they, they came over here, which is just a stone's throw away from the diner where we just were at. And we're told from the newspaper articles and from the documents that they were buried at Ruby and Blake. The corner of Ruby and Blake at a lot, which is what we're looking at right now. And we know that shortly after that, on May 28th of 81, they find Alphonse, Sunny Red, and Delicado. Now, what we're told is that there was children playing here which discovered the body. We're also told that that might have been a ruse put on by the law enforcement because we know that Willie Boy Johnson was an informant at that time. So there's also information that says that Willie Boy Johnson, codenamed Wahoo by the FBI, was uh, you know in on telling them where this where this body was. Now, why they didn't dig to find the rest of the bodies, we don't know, because we know in 2004 Dominic Big Trin Trinchera and Philip Giacome were found here. So what was the reasoning behind not further digging to find these other two capos and not doing that till 20 years later? I'm as perplexed as you are about that. So let's head here down into the hole. And we're going to Ruby and Blake. Sorry for some of the shakiness. I actually got a gimbal recently, a pretty good one, but I'm not used to using it yet. So we are going to... We, yeah, you're going to see a lot of weird stuff in here. All right. So right now, we are at Ruby and Blake. So let's get a look at this lot right here first. Let's look in here. Try to get closer in there. Try to get a closer look. It's about to get apocalyptic in here. Let's check this shit out, guys. Look at this. Look at this. And it's good that it's a gloomy day. It kind of adds to the ambiance, right? It's I've been like looking for one of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, look at that. <laughs> It's a gloomy day, like I said, it adds to some of the ambiance here. Okay, so here's one lot right here, guys and gals. Now, I decided that I'm not trekking through this, <laughs> but was this the lot where the three capos were found? Quite possibly, quite possibly right here. Let's go across the street because there's another lot right there. And we're gonna look at that one as well. You know what, actually, let's go over here. Let me step on all this suspect material. And right now, too, there's a lot of commercial stuff. Back yeah. Here. So you don't yeah. know back then it might have not been as active. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you can see now there's like a bus depot here. There's a lot of construction. We don't know what was going on back then. I'm sure maybe similar, but back then you also, you know, as me and Chris were talking about before, could have been that Gotti's guys or whoever it was, they own some of these properties here. We know that Carneglia was in the Fountain Avenue junkyard, so he had experience 
owning some uh, junkyard property. So you never know. You never know exactly what these guys had their hands in. So we're at another lot right here. And let's walk, let's walk over. Yeah, this is a big lot. Is, is that the conduit up there? I'm not sure. Okay, let's look in here. Maybe it's more likely to be in this lot. Yeah, let's look in this lot. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at this. Man, this seems like a good, this seems like a good guess to be honest with you. This is a big lot and yeah. And of course we have this adjoining lot right here. So this is a pretty big lot and it looks like you can hide pretty good in here, right? 100%. Watch your back. Beep, beep. It looks like you can hide a little better than you can hide in that one, right? Yeah, definitely. Because that one's pretty small. And we don't know what the fences might have looked at at that time. I'm sure these fences are different. But man, when I look at this lot here, this looks like potentially... Yeah, this area too, you could come in real quick and be out real quick. For sure. You got in there, for sure. you got the conduit, you got the belt. Yeah. You could be on the bandwidth and totally out of the area. Exactly. Or judging where these guys lived at the time, yeah, you know, they would have been home in like 10 minutes. You know, Howard Beach, Ozone Park. Yeah, so let's look at this lot. This is uh, at the corner up there is uh, Blake and Ruby. This is a pretty big lot right here. Yeah, so it's a, uh, yeah, it stretches pretty far. And as I said before, it seems like a good place to hide. It certainly seems like a good place to hide if you're doing some digging at night. So is this the lot where the three capos were buried? Quite possibly, quite possibly right here, guys and gals. Look at this, you know, and you gotta understand something also that as we're here right now, Let's get a clear footage in here. Very nice. And you gotta understand that as we're here right now, it's quite possible that yeah. there is bodies that are still here. Yeah. Now we know that Tommy D. Simone, Lucchese mobster, um, played by Joe Pesci and Goodfellas, we know that it's assumed that he was buried here somewhere. That's kind of what's been told to us i mean there's all types of other stories but it would make sense it would make sense that he would be here i heard a story about um which i i believe is complete bullshit about him uh ending up in a car and driving him to philly to crush him i mean that makes absolutely no sense to me that's similar to like the shit you hear about jimmy hoffa being killed um forgive me i believe he was killed in the michigan or ohio area you're gonna slaughter me for not knowing that but and then they drove him across a bunch of states to like bury him i mean that doesn't make sense it, you, have, you know if you have all these other areas yeah. at your disposal why exactly you exactly body exactly because at that lines, time yeah. yeah at that time you had the corneglia brothers junkyard you had this place the hole um, why the hell would you drive a body i mean it doesn't make any sense at all so guys we're looking once again at this lot right here. And then we're looking over here at this lot here. And my assumption is that it's the lot behind us that we were just at. Simply because of the size. You know, but. Definitely eerie. It's definitely eerie. You're right, Chris. You're right. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, originally they thought that John Favara was buried here. So they came here to Blake and Dumont, which is over there, and they started digging up there after they find the other two captains, but they didn't find anything. Now, there's been other people from this area, you know, I found articles, oh, there's five, this guy is talking about 13 bodies are there, five bodies are there. I think it's just become exaggeration over time as to how many bodies are actually here, but I'm gonna guess that as we're standing here, there is bodies here. How many, I don't know, but we're at the corner once again of Blake and Ruby, where they found the bodies of Alphonse, Sunny Red, and Delicato back in 81. 
And then in 2004, over 20 years later, Philip Giacconi and Dominic Big Trin Trinchera who were killed at the 2020 club. Yeah, what do you got? I wonder too, like in the 60s, they did a lot of work back here. It said building retaining walls or whatever. Yeah. They end up ever doing more work. Yeah, you know, yeah, they did a lot of work. Yeah, well, yeah, you never know. One of the things that they were saying when they were digging is that over time they tried to uh, fix some of the ground in these lots. They were putting concrete down there, trying to reinforce it. So they thought that was going to be a problem in trying to dig this area up. So let's get one more look at Ruby and Blake. We got the lot right there. We got the lot right there. This was the resting place for the three capos. So they were found. Now, let's just take a stroll through this area. What do you say? We're gonna take another stroll and uh, get a glimpse of what's going on here. I know there's been other videos of this done, um, but I'm trying to really pinpoint exactly where that lot was and I think I did. I think it makes sense that that's where that was. Some of the videos I saw also, these guys are coming back here at night, so you don't got yeah. good yeah. rules on anything. And yes. also not for nothing, I wouldn't come back here at night creeping around. I would not come back here at night. Yeah, I wouldn't come back here at night either. Um, I know that Action Kid did a walkthrough of this video, but he just did a general walkthrough doing what he does. You know, he's good at that. And, uh, now, oh yeah, for sure. I know Mooney Dash Cam did a drive through here as well, but, uh, you know, I figured it was worth it for my channel to give a little walk and, uh, also with the diner too. yeah, yeah for sure. You diner. guys got to see the Lindenwood Diner as well, which is kind of cool. So here we go here. You see this old building here. Now, once that existed here was also a federation called the the Federation of Black Cowboys, which was um, no longer in existence now. I think they had to move them out to make room for housing, but this was a society that was honoring the uh, black cowboys throughout uh, American history. That was here. I'm not sure why it was here, but nonetheless, it was. So you guys are seeing some of this area here. Oh, real estate. <laughs> it's probably the most beautiful thing in this hole. You got that weeping tree right there. That's really nice. Look at that. Wow, that thing is probably very old. It's a beautiful tree. Wonder how it lasts so long. You know? Wow, look at that. Looks right. We look over here. Look at this. Yeah, guys, this is an interesting place, and, you know, people do live here, so we want to be respectful. We're not really causing trouble here, just doing a walkthrough. I actually heard a, a video with a guy talking who lives back here, and he said one of the reasons he liked living back here was because it's secluded, and that, yeah. he does, you know, that not a lot of people would just come here. You exactly. Know, apart from everybody else. Exactly. And it's kind of reminiscent, if anybody watching knows, of the Iron Triangle in Flushing, which most of it has been taken down at this point. Um, that's the triangle that's right across the street from City Field, formerly Shea Stadium. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I spent many time as a youth walking through there, messing around. And, uh, yeah, so that place is very reminiscent of that. Although I will say that place is actually worse than this, I think. Because you would drive Please through. Definitely yeah. Yeah, the streets there were so bad. It's almost like they made them stay bad on purpose so you can pop a tire and, and fucking, you know, get a new tire there. So we have another lot right here, as you can see. Yeah, I mean, there's so many areas back here. God knows, you know. Yeah, what, what, who the hell knows? What went on. Who the hell knows? Stuff that was reported, not reported. And you guys watching, you know, this area of Brooklyn and Queens was certainly a mafia stronghold. You know, the Howard Beach, Ozone Park, East New York. I mean, this whole area was just infected with the mob. Smell that? Fresh sewage. Yeah, it smells like sewage, guys. I don't know how we're going to get over there, but look at this. Look at all this sewage. This is why they say low-lying area of Queens, because we're, we're pretty low. And you get all these water collections here. You get all this bad sewage and stuff. And we got these trailers here, and people are living in there. People are living in there. 
my understanding, the work they had to do to the houses was similar to what they did to houses after Sandy. Building, what did they do? Where they raised all the houses okay. up off of the floor and built retaining walls. Um, that's what they were talking about, what I read. In, in okay, so they had to reinforce to, them. Yeah, trying to um, escape the problem of the flooding, raise the houses. and. Wow, wow. So that's a whole, that's a big job in itself. Yeah, you know? yeah, man. So especially when they decided to build new housing here, I'm sure it was a problem. Look at that house on the other side there. Look at that abandoned thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The water is the worst, man. Water Very eerie. It worse yep. and worse and worse and yep. breaks everything down, you know. Yeah, and you don't know how they were building these houses. You know, you don't know what kind of wood and what kind of structures they were doing back then. Also, this is basically a freshwater collection, right? Yeah. I mean, it could Rain. be a mix of both. I don't, could know. be a mix of both, yeah, yeah. Who knows what's coming up out of the ground? Yeah. You know? Wow. So you guys are getting another glimpse of this area here. Um, so let's go back around and maybe we'll go around the corner and go to the other side. Look, this guy's gonna drive through. Uh, I don't think that guy's driving through. We've had to test it before. Looks a little rough around the edges over here. All right, guys, I just stopped filming for a second. We're back at uh, Blake and Ruby at the lots where the three capos were. We're gonna head up this way and we're gonna go around and take a look uh, from the other side. Um, you know, it's weird here, you know, you walk down one block and you run into a freaking massive puddle. And, you know, honestly, I don't want to walk through that. You need your waders. <laughs> yeah. If you ever come here, you know, I got sneakers on. I think Chris does too, kind of. So you want to get some real good boots, maybe even some winter boots if you really want to get down dirty in here. This is cool. We're going to get some elevation here, so we'll get a... We'll get a look from up top here. You can see the lots. And this is a weird place, man. I wouldn't want to be here at night. I mean, I'm not trying to talk about the people that live here or anything. It's just kind of eerie. Um, takes a certain kind of person to come here like those guys did and start burying bodies at night, you know. But I guess if you're packing heat, it's... Uh, it's another story. So we're on a more uh, residential block right now. Got us a little doggy over there. Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm happy he's back there and not roaming free, you know? It's such a difference between one block. You know, yeah. One yeah. block, it's completely uh, For sure. it changed. industrial, broken down. And over here, it's all residential. Exactly. And the cool thing about this, like many times I speak in my videos, it's like, you know, a lot of these areas that I go to, oh, look at this right here, wow. A lot of these areas that I go to in like East New York and Brooklyn, you know, you could, the houses have been the same for so many decades. So it's almost like a glimpse of what the people would have saw back then. Whereas other neighborhoods in New York City have been so gentrified and so changed and so many apartment buildings that it's almost hard to, capture kind of what was going on back then you know especially if you go into manhattan and certain parts of brooklyn and you know but you know there's certain areas that are still kind of the same which i like and i just want to remind you guys uh, i did do a video i mentioned earlier on the corneglia brothers who are associated with this particular area you can check that out the brothers carniglia the fountain avenue junkyard and the house on pine street and of course i also did the willie boy johnson video because uh we're told that you know he might have tipped him off as to what happened over here so you can go to and watch that willie boy video you can see where he was killed outside his house by uh tommy karate patera vincent kojak Iatino. That was in 1988. All right, so we'll come over here and then we'll dip. All right. National grid. All right, let's walk through this. This is kind of cool. Yeah, this is kind of cool. This is like, uh, like 
a few years ago, you know, where I live in Queens, there was a, a lot of fig trees died for whatever reason, but there was a lot of fig trees in the neighborhood and it, it looked like that. And I used to walk by and, you know, grab a couple, <laughs> grab a couple of them. But something happened a few years ago. I don't, there's not that many fig trees left in my area, you know. All the old paisans are dying off too, so. So we got another lot over here. No trespassing. All right, we don't gotta worry about that because we do not want to go in there anyway. All right, so we're on the other side now, guys. At the hole, which is the former resting site of the three capos and who knows who else. John Favaro was apparently here. So this is Dumont. So it's good that we're here actually, because also in 2004, what we were saying before, oh, yeah. was that after they found the three capos, they were looking for John Favara and they were looking for uh, Tommy D. Simone, and they were digging between here, Dumont, and the other side, Blake, a lot between here. And they didn't find anything. As far as I know, they didn't find anything. And then, you know, after Carneglia Charles, Carneglia goes down, we find out some of the details around 2009, 2010, about what eventually happened to Favara. And Tommy DeSimone is still a mystery. I believe Tommy Agro took credit for that killing. Look at this here. But uh, where that body is, I don't know. It could be here. All right. I've never seen that. Dumpsters piled up. Like yeah, that. look at this. We got dumpsters on top of dumpsters on top of dumpsters. Some sent four tags, dumpster god. More cameras on that phone. More cameras. Yeah. Um, so we got a puddle here. Let's figure out what we're gonna do. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's go. That's not too bad at all. So this is Quick Hits 5. Here we got some trailers here. Where you know I don't do a story beforehand, we kind of just walk through wherever we're going. Um, this is turning out to be a little longer than quick, but that's cool. Oh, look at this. Dead end. That guy over there is staring at us. Whatever, we're out of here soon. Don't worry, buddy boy. All right, so let's go up this way, Chris. We got another weeping tree right here. Wow, look at that. These are awesome. This is like the prettiest thing in here, these two weeping trees. All right, let's get up over here. I don't know what this is I'm stepping on. Oh, God. Oh, sick. Yeah, so we're... All right, cool. So we're back at Linden. And can we get a view of the diner from here? I think so, right? It's going to be to the left of that. Up. Okay, Once cool. We're at the corner, we should be able to see it. Cool. So let's go to the corner, guys. We'll get a look at the diner, and that'll give us another reference, uh, you know, as to how close this was to that diner where they hung out. I mean, that's a good. That's probably why they hung out there too. It's right yeah. off the belt. So yeah, exactly. To, it's right off the belt. This is pretty much their neighborhood, and you know, like many diners in the tri-state area, they're open. Some of them 24 hours. You know, some of them deep into the night. So. It's a uh, good place to hang out and bullshit and uh, no pissing, no pissing. All right, cool. So let's get another look down here at the hole. All right. And we're gonna head back over here. We'll try to get a look at the diner and give you guys a reference point. I can't think of a, another name more appropriate for this spot right? the hole. I don't know if Let's get out of the way here. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a good name. It's definitely a good name. You even see how the elevation, like we're going up once we get on Linden. And then everything just drops into a hole. See these houses here. So just a quick walk through. Thought that was cool. All right, this looks like a new building, of course. I don't know what the deal is with this kind of structure. They're popping up all over New York City. I don't know what it is, but it's kind of a... I feel like I've seen this building a thousand times. 
Yeah, there's the Lindenwood Diner. There it is. And back here is the hole. Man. Talk about shitting talk about shitting where you eat, huh? That way you got the conduit going to the belt. Okay. To the right, you're heading back down into uh going to the board to put the Okay. And uh, if we go that way we can eventually hit Long Island? Yes. Yeah, so like Valley Stream area. You hop on the belt of the conduit. One way you're gonna go east. Okay. Long Island, Green Acres Mall, Valley Stream. Okay. And if you go the other way, go to Brooklyn, you go to the Bad Wing. Queens, okay. Manhattan, sky's the limit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So which way are we gonna go to head back? Uh, go this way. Yeah. I mean, All right. Yeah, we'll head this way. We're on Emerald Street right yeah. now. We're on Linden Boulevard. I mean, yeah. Anyway, besides that, cause that water down there. <laughs> so I'm gonna end it here, guys. We'll get another look down at the hole. I hope everybody enjoyed this video and seeing this location and uh, I hope I was able to pinpoint exactly where the three capos were buried and uh, yeah I appreciate all my subs and everybody that leaves good comments and likes and all that other good stuff guys everyone have a great week Chris thanks for coming Thank you. Appreciate it. this guy was protecting me the whole time I was scared <laughs> All right, everyone, quick hits five.